coming up. And that's how long I've been around. I just seen a lot of cats before they blew up. Right. You know what I'm saying? What um why didn't anything more materialize on Big Beat? Well, at the time too, it was all like new. Everything was just planned. It, it wasn't like I was in the studio, um, a whole bunch of album material ready. You know, I wasn't ready like that. It was just more like I'm taking what I had and just put it out. And then I was feeling feeling things. You know, I'm watching other artists and seeing the direction if they really gonna push you harder, like how I'm seeing other artists. So sometimes I'm more like, well, I'll give you a joint or two, but I'm a, I'll see what you do with that. If it seems like it's really going to, then I'm not going to do nothing. I'd rather just do what I do, you know what I'm saying? Move how I move and stay out there by any means until a good opportunity arises for me. Right. Uh, soon thereafter, you started working with artists like Cool Keith and Maestro Press Wes, as you mentioned, uh, Shazam. Well, I met Cool Keith. I'm, I'm sorry for cutting you off. I met Cool Keith at B-Boy Records. Okay. That's how I met him. When I met KG, I met him from B-Boy Records. But when South Bronx came out, we started, me and my man, G Smooth, we used to go over to B-Boy because it's in the Bronx. It's like in a sanitation department area. So we went in the area and we found the label. We started going there regularly. That's how I met KG from the Cold Crush because he had a record out. And they had some other artists, um, this guy, Levi, 167. You had um, LA Star, um, the brothers, the brothers that's um, Money Ray and Rest in peace to him. Um, this other cat named KG, um, but Scholar Rock and them was on that label. But that's how KG met me. You know what right. I'm saying? Some going down there and stuff. But um, now there's some the question you asked. I'm sorry, I got sidetracked talking about that. What was the question again? Um, how, I was, basically, I was, I was leading. How did you get down with uh, B Max Entertainment? Okay, B Max. Um, I met V V Max. Me and my man, um, Sick Lyrical Damager. He was actually AG. He's from Patterson Project, too. But before he was Sick Lyrical Damager, he is called Rod Swift. His name is Rodney. Rod Swift, he's a, actually my kindergarten class. He knew me since I was my mom's movie, Patterson. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So um, he was in my kindergarten class. So we knew each other. But AG is from the same hood as us. So him and AG used to be, AG name is Andre. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we called him Dre. So they call it Rodney and Dre. So they call themselves R2, D2. That was the name of them. And um, this is before Dre was down with the ITC. That it, it was R2, D2, and they, they would rhyme together, and their DJ name was Aaron. But his DJ name was DJ Double D. That stood for Devious Devastator. So I used to go to Double D house to make tapes. You know, he had turn tape with great beats. I rhyme. Me and my partner, the neighbor, would go over there. Just different cats from the neighborhood would go to his house to make tapes. Sometimes they might be over there, and we make something together. You rhyme, I'm a rhyme with this B, you rhyme. But we recording it on them Sony tapes or Maxwell's. That's before we would make records. Like it was just about making a tape. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's what we did. And that's and that's how um, you know, as far as like V Max. So me and my man um Sick Luca Damager went out to Queens to Left Rack City, Queens, and there's some some open mic thing going on out there. Me and him from the Bronx, so we went out there together and we met some cat named um Vance Reed. And um he was like the owner of the label. Just a small ind- independent label, but he liked me and me and my man um Sick Lyrical Damager. Rod Swift changed his name to Sick Lyrical Damager. He called himself Lazy Eye now. But but I said you should stick to that name, Sick Lyrical Damager, because you put out records using that name. You could use the AKA Lazy Eye, but stick to Sick Lyrical Damager. Cause if you Google it, you'll see more stuff under that name. So don't don't abandon it. You know what I'm saying? Right. But um that's a man him rap together, and the guy was impressed with both of us. We wasn't partners, but we knew each other's rhymes, so he'll back me up. We just went up together. And he was like, yo, man, what y'all, I'd love to do something with your guys. And we both put out our own stuff. I put out my No In There Simple, Don't Come Strapped. And he put out his song, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, if y'all look it up, y'all, y'all hear the song, you know what I'm saying? And then we made a song called Respect Course More Than Money, which we had before our own independent song, individual song. But... We just gave the, the label another strap to put out. And Sick and Shadam X produced for, for both of us anyway at the time. So we just gave the label that song, that one last song, which, which we already had previous before we had our own single and just put it out. And he had a lot of pictures on the front. But shout out to Shazam Max, too, you know, from Harlem. No doubt. You know, be out in Atlanta now. Uh, now we're getting into the 2000s. Uh, you come out with a mixtape now and then. A lot of DMs have come in 
Oh, a lot yeah. of DMs have came in and tell me how you used to hustle these mixtapes in front of Fat Beats. Can you take me back well, to those days? Yes, I, yes, I can. Well, Fat Beats was Percy P trying to preserve his name, his legacy, and let people know he still existed in hip hop. That was my way to stay up like a graph cat. Everywhere he went, he getting up. Well, Fat Beats was like a daytime hustle for me to be somewhere where everybody, because when you listen to Stretch and Barbito, they always advertise Fat Beats. They was like, yeah, all these records you hear, you can get down that Fat Beat. So I was somebody that people heard on the show regularly. I bought Ultra Magnetics to Stretch and Barbito. I bought them. Yeah, if you ask Stretch, they'll tell you. But I bought them. The reason why, because I knew them from B-Boy Records. I, I forgot to mention that. I met Ultra Magnetic at B-Boy. Uh -huh. And I knew Scott Rock and KG. And um, Scott Rock I knew very well. Sometimes he used to drop us off. Me and my man G Smooth going home. He would drop us off in Patterson in the cab. And he would keep going. But um, Ultra Magnetic used to come down there regularly. And that's how I met them. So when I saw like Keith and them on the street, they knew me from the label. So as time went on, Ultra Magnetic thought, you know, they was already out when, when I came to the label. You know what I'm saying? But stretching them at the time when they started, it was artists that they had the records, but they didn't know the artists personally. I knew Law Finesse already got about it. I knew AG. I put AG to a stretch of my beat the first time he was down there. He came with me. Um, um, Ultra Magnetic, I brought them down there. But um, that's how I met them. You know what I'm saying? Ultra. And then, um, well, when Barbito put out his first single, I mean, his first recording on his own label, his first independent record, it was the Senior Bites record with Godfather mm -hmm. Don. Right. Keith. But how I wound up on it, because Keith told me, like, yo, Don want to meet you. He never met me, but he wanted to meet you. And I went over to the Don house with Keith, and we just did that one song. But those songs that they was doing was promos for Stretch and Barbito's show. They were just making stuff for, the, for them to play. But Barbito compiled all of them and pressed them up. That was his very first release on Fondalum Records. But my song, the song I did with them was on there as well. It's called You're Late. But that's how that wound up on that song and then the rest was history any other artist that came out on the pond you know but the first release was the senior bite the cool keith and godfather don and i was just featured on the song barbito was on the song and, you know no doubt can you uh take me back to meeting jurassic five and what uh yielded from that relationship um i met them at urban plaza in new york city and, and right there in town on um, 14th street i met them from some guy named um, Bonnie Kulak. So it's a cat that I know, he's a Jewish brother, but um, cat that I know, um, he's a photographer. And he basically was, um, he asked me, cause it was one of the tapes, my first, rec if you ever saw my now and then cassette tape, mm -hmm. right? On the beginning, of, it was a show that I was standing on stage, but I had a visor on to the side, but he recognized the picture. He's like, yo, I, I remember this, I was at that show. And he told me, and he bought the tape off of me. But he was telling me that he would do like a, a photo shoot for free for me. That's what he told me. His father owned like the construction site. So I went, you know what I'm saying? I did it in Queens, like young Queens. But in return, he was just happy to get all these photos. And he's just like, yo, Pete, I want to like try to meet other artists. I know you know a lot of these people, which I did. I knew because I know like Rocky Montaigne from New Eureka Sports Cafe. Anywhere in the open mic spots I used to go to. So a lot of the upcoming artists knew me already. So I introduced him to Rocky because he's the person that anybody would have to come to to do a show at New Eureka. So he had everybody number. So I introduced him to Rocky and Rocky just called all these cats up for him to just do a photo shoot with everybody. And he was so happy. He said, yo, P, I appreciate that. I got so many photos of different artists. But he said, y'all got two tickets to Urban Plaza. I don't know if you want to go. It's Jurassic 5. They're going to be there. And I was like, where? I, I, I go. So that's how I really, the behind the scenes, that's how I met them. It was him gave me that ticket to go, and naturally, I'm going to bring my tape, because I was always on a self-promotion right. you know what I'm saying? So I went down there with tape, and he saw a cut chemistry. She's like, yo, that's cut chemistry right there. You should, you probably know you should go over and say what's up to him. I was reluctant at first. I was like, I don't know. So I went over there and said, hey, how you doing? You cut chemistry, right? He said, yeah, yeah. I said, yo, I don't know if you ever heard of me on Percy P. I don't know if you want to buy a tape. He's like, Percy P? Well, let the homicides begin, Percy P? I said, yeah. He said, yo, dude, how much did you tell you? He bought it from me. He said, yo, DJ Shadow put me up on that record. I'm still trying to get it. So he told me that. But then he said, hold on for a minute. He called the rest of them over and said, guess who this is? And it's who? This is Percy P. Percy P. Where are you? What you doing now? I said, I'm still rhyming. You know, you caught the tape off of me. It was like, yo, would you like to come out on, on stage after? You know, we're going to bite you out. I said, yeah, I'm down. 
I'm in New Mama, I'm in New York City, so this is a Urban Plaza is a big venue. So I'm trying to get that kind of exposure and still push my stuff. You know what right. I'm saying? So um I did that, but it's crazy. They was just like, yo, we're still working on the album, man. I'd love to get you and Big Daddy Kane on the track. That'd be ill. And they did it. They just didn't talk. They made it happen. So I much respect to the Jurassic Five, you know, the whole crew. You know what I'm saying? Because they really did what they said they would do. And then I met Mad Living on the same way, selling tape in New York. You know what I'm saying? At the spot called The Noun Bar. The village, you know what I'm saying? And just pushing tapes in. So, I mean, a lot of people that I made records with, a lot of a lot of them met me promoting myself, pushing stuff in. You know what I'm saying? Not a lot of people get to work with the late, great Jay Dilla and Mad Lib. Uh, can you take me back? Uh, you just mentioned how you met Mad Lib. How did you get on uh, the Jay Lib Champion Sound uh, song exclusive? Well, while I was recording that album, Perseverance, right there, yeah, I was recording that. And Egon, he was at, at the a and at Stone Store at the time. So he used to come to every session. Every time I would record, Egon would come down there just to check, see how everything is going, and then he'd leave. But he came to every session, recording that whole album. He did. And um, But while I was recording, he was just saying, yo, first, um, dude, would you have another verse for the J-Lib? Because remember, J-Lib album, once it came out, and remember, it got leaked. I don't know if you okay. remember that. It got leaked. So they had to come up with some extra songs. And that's how I wound up getting on it. So he's like, yo, you got something. Go around over this beat right here. And that's how, how it went down. So Jay Dilla produced, produced that track. But I actually did shows with them too, you know. And you could see like, you know, on, on YouTube, like I did a, on my Instagram, you could see a lot of flies and stuff from old past events and all that footage. But yeah, there's a flyer with me, Wild Child, um, Oh No, that's Madeline's brother. And um. Jay Lib, Jay Lib, Mad Lib and Jay Dilla. We all did a show at the Congo Room in LA. You know what I'm saying? But there's footage of that show. Of them performing though. But my footage I ain't my man, I know the cat that said he taped it, but I'm still waiting for that footage <laughs> now. But there's footage if you if you Google J J Lib at Congo Room, you can see it like a lot of, of their show. Right. Still. And I put a little clip of it on my YouTube playlist. On my right on my link on my own profile. You see? In 2007, we finally got that solo debut album. What took so long, Percy P? Life. <laughs> <laughs> Your life, man. You live in it and trying to survive and just doing stuff. And sometimes, you know, all oh, y'all try to maintain money doing this, that. So I was just trying to write when I could. But that was my chance, you know what I'm saying? To, to really finally get something that for people could really hear what I got. And I still got a lot left. You know right. what I'm saying? But it was just like that. So I finally got a chance. And also, me waiting for the right opportunity. Because I always met people that, yeah, man, I could put you out. I could do this. I could do that. But with Stone Stone, it was different. It was more like, I'm on the East Coast, but they're West Coast. Right. Like, it was like, oh, shit. I'm signed with them. They're guaranteeing me a West Coast fan base because the label's on the West. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, well, I'll do that. And then I want to move out there. You know what I'm saying? So I moved out there in like 2004. You mm -hmm. know? But um, it, it, you know, took a little minute because because remember, Wild Child was rhyming with Mad Lib. But they used to rhyme and loop right. So in Rome, they used to do tours, and I had to have to wait for Mad Lib to kind of come back from shows and get back to recording on my album and mixing and just you know trying to just fix up songs. But he started after a while. He started making remixes to it. You know, so he probably was hearing it so much he started just thinking of, well, I'm gonna try to work on it. I'm gonna do another beat, and he wound up having two perseverance you know what i'm saying so when it first was going to come out they were going to put a make it a double album and they separated the releases they said we're going to put out the original one and then we're going to put out the remix one like two months later you know what i'm saying right. so that's how that went down but um yeah uh, that's how that went down and um, working, still doing it right working now, with you know? the salt after producer like mad lib what did you learn from uh working with him uh for that album well to be honest, I never recorded with him in the studio. At first, I took it personal. I was like, yo, I'm used to, like, people in the studio with me. Like, you know, T-Ray, like, all these cats I ever worked with was actually in the studio. But Madeline never came to the studio, so I didn't know how to take that at first. I was like, dang, he ain't come to the studio. But when I started reading other people's interviews, like MF Doom came out before Perseverance. So I read on his interviews, yeah, man, I would get beat CDs from Egon, which I got. He used to give me CDs that said one to 50 beat, then another one 
um, 50 to 100, and another one 100 to 150, like that. And I ain't got these CDs. I wish I had them now, but but that's what I had to pick to say, okay, I'm going to use this track, and he would let Egon know if that's available and like that. That's how I went. And then once I dropped my vocals, he took the vocals and then made what you hear now, put the scratches and all that. I ain't never tell him what to use. Only thing, um, only part I remember telling them was the part where Jay Dillard was like, um, on my part on the last of the grace, you better learn on one of the greatest alive. I remember saying, y'all want you, I want to use that. And J Rock was the one from the Beat Junkies cutting, doing the scratches on the album, but he's cutting that up. But that's the only thing I had input. I just sit, I always say, I want to use that. You know what I'm saying? It, and that's the only thing I ever gave input beats. Um, the woman behind me actually is the, the, the one that's on the video, that's actually, it says remix, but that's actually the beat I rapped over in the studio. Uh, but when the when the album came out, what you heard is really the remix. And on the remix album was the original. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So the video, the video version is the original woman behind me. It's the original version, but they put out the remix. The other version on the Perseverance that you see behind me, put that one out first, and then the remix, the original version on the remix album. We got about five minutes before we get out of here. For those who may not have known yeah. what you have been up to since uh, that album, can you uh, tell us what you have been up to and what you're currently working on? Um, I'm still, I'm still with a lot of stuff. Hold on, I wrote some stuff down. For those who know, just go on my Instagram. Look at everything I post. You could Google everything. It's all there. Here's, you got my man, Mr. Tough Cut. There's some vinyl about to drop right now. You could go on there and see the link. You could hear that the whole the band camp, but it's going to come out on vinyl. I got a song called Beastin' on it. It's just me and this guy named Simon Vincent. But it's Tough Cut, and it's, it's um, called Keep On Digging. So you'll see that right on my Instagram. And then Platter Push and Codex album called Planet of the Misfit. I'm on that as well. And um, my man Big D and Easy Moby, we got it's a video, it's a new single out right now called Everywhere. It features me, Bruce Wayne, um, Wait Up Black, um, um, Money Bags, o um, Hoffa, Hoffa Fleeto, um, Innocent, Innocent Flow. You know what I'm saying? He's on it as well. So and my man um, Capital produced that track. But um, so I'm on. I'll be on like two songs on this album or three. And and um. The album before that called This Is My Life, Big D and Easy Mobile. I'm on like two tracks on that. But if y'all want to go go to my Instagram profile and click click on the link, that, that's a playlist. So you'll see a lot. I make sure I put album covers and everything so you can know where this, the songs is from. And there's way more. I got more stuff coming. I usually will talk about stuff when it's when it's time. When somebody give me a link or artwork, then I'll promote it. I don't want to like, talk about stuff that I ain't got nothing right. to show. But go on my Instagram and just click. You'll see everything. I put I put my history on there because I felt like for years, sometimes people over kind of overlooked me a lot. And I know I was around, right. but for somehow I feel like I could at least have some kind of say so now by controlling the narrative. So I just take control. I'm just put all the stuff up. People ain't gonna acknowledge me, but I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna let you know this is what I accomplished rather than hearsay. Right. And it's still more. You know, go on my YouTube channel. I hope everybody's watching this. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe, and you just stay in tune. And look at my profile, go through my YouTube, and just look at what I post. You know, and I appreciate everybody. And I'm still doing stuff. I'm still available, features, all that. Just get at me. My email is right on my Instagram profile, and um, or my email. Hit me in the email or hit me in the DM right on there. And yes, yeah, new stuff coming. Everything, man. Percy P. Thank you so you much, out, man. Bro. Uh, for everything you've done for the culture. Uh, like I said, I've been a huge fan since uh I heard you way back in the day. So it's been an honor talking to you. Can you uh tell the fans, you, man, where they can keep up with you on social media? Um, I'm on the Twitter, TikTok, and and Instagram at the real Percy Peace, which I already know. Instagram, but same thing on Twitter and, and TikTok. I'm on Facebook too, Percy P, you know, just John Simon. But um, yeah, man, just hit me up. My email is right there on my profile. You look on my Instagram profile, you see my email there or hit me in the DM. So if it's for bookings or, you know, inquiries, hit me there. I'll get at you. You know what I'm saying? We'll make some, we'll make some classics, some future classics. No doubt. Keep doing your thing, do. man. Uh, it's good to see. Keep doing what you do, brother. Yeah. I appreciate what you reaching out to me, and I appreciate what you do, absolutely. too, Absolutely. Uh, keep doing your thing. It's absolutely a joy to see my heroes still doing their thing, and it's a, a great feeling to be able to give you your roses while you're still alive. 
and acknowledge you. Oh, man. Thank you. No doubt. Thank you. I appreciate and that. I, appreciate and you, bro. And everybody that supported me out there, my kids, you know what I'm saying, wife, all that. Like, I appreciate it all. You know what I'm saying? One love to all, all the people out there. I, I ain't fall off. Y'all just go listen to that playlist. You see, I still got them bars. <laughs> no doubt. Still got them. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for logging on. I see Mad Heads in the uh, chat room, and I appreciate everybody. This has been episode yes, 95. Sir. Thank you so much, Percy P., and I'll see you again soon, yes, sir. sir. Salute. Salute.